Hello and welcome to Saurabh's classes. Today we are discussing the IIT JAM 2020 Mathematical Statistics paper. So this is one question that came in the paper which says for real constants a and b there is a function fx which is defined by a sin x minus 2x over x for x less than 0 and bx for x greater than equal to 0. And we are also told that the function f is differentiable and we are asked to find the values of or the value of a plus b. Now, in order to solve this problem, we have to check for two conditions. The first condition is the continuity, continuity of the function fx. And the second condition is the continuity of the function f dashed x or the first differential of x. Why are we doing this? Because it is told that f is differentiable. If f is the differentiable, then it has to fulfill both this con these two conditions that fx has to be continuous only then f dashed x will exist over the entire range and therefore it will be differentiable. And not only that, if f dash x has to exist over the entire domain, then it has to be continuous itself. So it has to fulfill both the conditions. Now let us check for the first condition first, which is continuity of fx. Now we can clearly see that fx has two parts in two domains and therefore we have to check for the values of fx as x as x tends towards 0 from the positive side and as x tends towards 0 from the negative side. So we can clearly see that from the positive side which is x greater than 0 as x tends to 0 fx is equal to 0 from x tending to 0 from the positive side. Now what about the, the negative side? Now in the negative side we have fx is equal to a sin x over x minus 2 for x less than 0. Now as x tends to 0 sin x tends to x tends to 0 because as x tends to 0, the values of x and sin x becomes almost equal. So therefore, we can write fx equal to ax over x minus 2 as x tends to 0 from the negative side, which means this tends to a value of a minus 2 as x tends to 0 from the negative side. Now, in order for the function fx to be continuous, that means in order to fulfill the first condition, both the values have to be equal in the limits as x tends to 0 from the positive and the negative sides. So from the positive side, as x tends to 0, fx equal to 0 and from the negative side, as x tends to 0, fx becomes a minus 2. So therefore, a minus 2 will be equal to 0 as limit x tends to 0 from both sides. So therefore, a is equal to 2. So from the first condition, we get the value of a equal to 2. Now we'll check for the second condition. Now first we'll find out the value of f dashed x. Now f dashed x is equal to the first derivative of a sin x over x minus 2 the derivative of this with respect to x that means equal to ddx of this function as x is less than 0 and f dash x is equal to ddx of vx for x greater than 0 greater than equal to 0. Now, 
we can clearly see that in the second case when x is greater than or equal to 0 ddx of bx becomes equal to b for x tending to 0 from the positive side. So this is the expression of f dash x at x equal to 0 from the positive side. What about the negative side? Now in the negative side we have f dash x is equal to ddx of a sin x over x means a x cos x minus a sin x over x square. Now this means that as x tends to 0 this uh, the first term in the numerator tends to 0 because there is an x here. The second term also tends to 0 because there is a sin x here. So 0 minus 0 over 0 is uh, undefined. So we have to uh, find the the value of limit x tending to 0 of f dashed x here limit x tending to 0 minus of f dashed x. So we have to find this and since it is of the form 0 by 0 we will use the law of hospitals rule. So this is equal to limit x tending to 0 minus and using the law of hospitals rule we differentiate the numerator and the denominator. So that means ddx of a x cos x minus a sin x over ddx of x square or we can write this as limit x tending to 0 minus we take a out as a common uh, factor into uh, differentiate the differential of x cos x means cos x plus x into minus sin x minus differential of sin x is cos x so this is the differential of the numerator and in the denominator we will get 2x now cos x minus cos x will cancel out and then we have x and x cancelling out. So this becomes limit x tending to 0 minus a comes out. In fact, a by 2 comes out. Limit x tending to 0 minus minus sin x. So which is nothing but equal to 0 as x approaches 0 from the negative side. So we have the values of f dash x equal to b coming from the positive side and equal to 0 coming from the negative side. So therefore b is equal to 0 in the limiting case where x tends to 0 or x uh, takes the limiting value of 0 from both sides. So b equal to 0 and a equal to 2 are the values of a and b from the two conditions. So therefore a plus b is equal to 2. So option c is the correct choice. We come to the next question here where we are given two curves defined by the equations uh, y1 x is equal to x4 minus 2x square and y2 x is equal to 2x square and we are asked to find the area of the region bounded by these two curves. Now, before we start, I would like to share some interesting facts about the uh, nature of curves. Now, you see here we are given two curves. One is having the highest power as x squared. The other one is having the highest power as x4. Now, any curve which has an even power of the uh, variable x will behave like this will behave like this 
and as you increase the power what will happen to this curve is it will become more steeper it will become more and more steeper so this is <coughs> the nature of the curve uh, when the power is an even power so here we can see that the the curve which has the lower power will ha have uh, more area bounded with uh, the x-axis than the the uh, curve which has a higher power so <clears throat> these are the two important concepts that uh, we uh, wanted to share before we start solving this uh, of course the solution is is very simple uh, where first we have to find the points of intersection of y1x and y2x so point of intersection means we equate the two so x4 minus 2x square is equal to 2x square we get this by equating y1x is equal to y2x in order to find the <coughs> points of their intersection so <coughs> that means x4 minus 4x square is equal to 0 or x square into x plus 2 into x minus 2 is equal to 0 that means the, the values of x will be 0 plus 2 and minus 2 so the points of intersection of uh, the two curves will be plus 2 and plus 2 and minus 2 and they will touch each other they will not intersect but they will touch each other at x equal to 0 so it will be like this and we are trying to find uh, the the area that is that is uh, there in between the two curves on both sides so which means that all we have to do is to find the the area on one side and area bounded on the positive side of x axis and multiply that by 2 because they are symmetric the, the areas bounded on the two sides of x axis will be symmetric so uh, we can clearly see that the first curve or the second curve is like this and the first curve will be something like this so we are trying to find these two areas so as i said the the one with the lower power will have uh, more area bounded with the x axis so from that we have to subtract the one with the higher power which which uh, which covers less area with the x axis so that means we have to do integral of 0 to 2 y 2x minus y 1x dx so this is what will give us the area on one side of the x axis and we have to multiply this with 2 so this is the required area so this will be 2 into integral of 0 to 2 it is very easy now y2x is x4 minus 2x square and y1x i'm sorry y2 is 2x square minus y1x is x4 minus 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 plus 2x square dx so this is equal to 2 integral 0 to 2 4x square minus x4 dx which which will be equal to 2 integral of uh, 4x square dx is 4x to the power 3 y3 minus integral of x4 dx is x to the power 5 by 5 and we do this from the interval 0 to 2 which is equal to twice 
4 into x cube over 3 means 4 into 8 over 3. We are substituting the values. So 4, eight, 4 into 8 over 3 minus 2 to the power 5 over 5. So that is nothing but 2 into 32 over 3 minus 32 over 5 and if I do this if I do this simplification this will be equal to 2 into 32 into 1 third minus 1 5 1 fifth which is 2 into 32 into 2 by 15 which is equal to 128 over 15 and we can see that the option A is 128 over 15 and that is the correct choice.